Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of the Weather Live Weekly Outlook. Only this time, well, yeah, we're going to look out about a week, but we're really just kind of focusing on what's going to happen here about five days from now. Of course, I'm talking about the total eclipse of the sun on April 8th of 2024. So looking at the areas that are likely to have cl uh, cloud cover, and those that at this point appears to be favorable conditions for viewing the once-in-a-lifetime event. With that being said, today's a huge anniversary, and I would be remiss if I didn't at least talk a little bit about the April 3rd, 1974 super outbreak. 50 years ago today, the eastern United States bore witness to the most uh, terrible tornado outbreak ever i mean that uh, in, in sheer terms of uh, the violence of these storms that day we've never seen anything like it in fact on april 3rd 1974 there were 148 total tornadoes but something like 90 of them were ef3 or greater something incredible like that there were 23 ef4s that day you think about an ef4 and how powerful that is that's like um Henryville, 2020 uh, or 2012. That's like Mayfield uh, in December 21. We know how powerful those storms were. Well, on April 3rd, 1974, there were 23 of those. And then there were seven uh, EF5 tornadoes. Just incredible event. I'm very proud to offer you a documentary that I've been working on for two months. We just released it last night. And uh, you can find it at the website that is thesuperoutbreak.com. Thesuperoutbreak.com. Can't be easier. That'll land you here. You have the main documentary. Full-length documentary is 52 minutes. Hopefully you absolutely love it. It is focused on the town of Brandenburg in parts of southern Indiana, tracking two twin EF5s and the devastation that they brought. And then the, the whole change that those tornadoes and all the tornadoes on April 3rd of 1974 brought to the state of meteorology and uh, our current warning system. We just would not have the luxuries that we have today if it wasn't for what occurred back then. So it's so important to keep those uh, stories alive of the survivors, and we have a bunch of them. And in fact, on the right-hand side of the uh, webpage, you're going to see individual stories from all of the survivors. Check it out. That's thesuperoutbreak.com. You did not know that you were coming here for that promotion but in fact you did on this april 3rd of 2024 50 years after the great super outbreak anyway with that being said let's talk about what's happening now and then let's uh put together a forecast because if you're like me you're willing to travel a little bit to see the once in a lifetime event so this is what we're dealing with now if the eclipse was occurring now well You'd have really great viewing uh, for those areas out west. I say great viewing. I'm talking about Texas. Southern Texas would be uh, the location that would be in line, of course, for that. Uh, looking good there. Uh, where we do have cloud cover, Ohio Valley right now. And the storm system out west, that one will play a factor once we get into this actual eclipse forecast. Because that is the storm. That is going to change the weather here locally. So let's go on over to the weather models, if you will. Current uh, run of the GFS, that's, uh, excuse me, that's the European forecast model here. And uh, showing you where we've got the two troughs of low pressure. One out east, that's where you have the cloud cover. And the second one comes in. And we'll stop it here. This is uh, Saturday. Uh, energy reaches the plains. That will bring some thunderstorms to the southern plains, by the way. And then that upper energy just kind of spins out. So as you head into the 8th, what we have is a split jet. Okay, get the southern branch down here. Get the northern branch up there. So this is going to be a non-progressive weather pattern at the time. And then it's, it's uh, really the idea is to figure out how much of these jet stream winds are going to bring cloud cover. Cloud cover is the name of the game. So let's go on over to... What the clouds are going to look like will start you at the upper levels of the atmosphere. I'm going to start with the bad news first. Bad news is the upper levels of the atmosphere, uh, up there are about 30,000 feet where the jet planes fly. We've got clouds are going to be flying in from the southwest. I'm going to pause this right here for, because this is the eighth we are looking at. That line of totality runs right through here. 
Oops. Yeah, no, that's not right. It runs right like this. Actually, that's not very good either. Let me try again. I actually got a map for this. I'll show you in a minute. But these are the high clouds, which would mean that the best viewing would be somewhere across the Ohio Valley. <clears throat> that being said, that's just looking at one slice of the pie because at the lower end, we've got some low clouds as well to talk about. Early on the 8th, perhaps across the Ohio River Valley, parts of the Midwest, that's what they front that's going to wash out. So we have to time the placement of the front and then watch its movement and then also um, figure out just how much moisture is going to be available for this front to produce clouds and produce a spoiler because that's what we don't want to see is a spoiler on this day that so many people have planned for. Uh, but that's the way it looks at this point. Um, let me go on over to, there's another model I was tracking for you as well. This is the, uh, this is the GFS Global Forecast Station Future IR telling a similar story. We've got clouds, but they're going to be more down in this area here. Uh, so I think if you're going to have an opportunity or a shot at some pretty dry air, perhaps Indiana, perhaps um, Ohio, further uh, further north, further upstream, also it looks like you're in pretty good shape. Total cloud cover is going to be very low. Uh, this is, again, the 8th. Let me go back because this is... Um, evening on the 8th let me go back right here so during the day this is total cloud cover here might be a little overdone with total cloud cover but it, you can see we've got good view in indiana and ohio you've got some cloud cover into new york you've got a whole bunch of cloud cover across parts of the southwest so with that being said you came here probably for a forecast and not just a uh, live model interpretation so I'm going to give you my forecast here here is the line of totality and I think if you're in if you're unfortunate enough to live in Texas or Arkansas I think you're in bad shape I think these areas are gonna be cloud cover so this is a no-go cloud cover uh, from Western Kentucky to the Wabash River, a little more questionable. So it could be partly cloudy. I'd say you could go either way. Equal chances of seeing good weather or maybe more cloud cover. I think your chances of seeing a good deal of sunshine right now looking pretty good, actually, for northern Ohio, central, southern portions of Indiana. So that's a big check right now. That's good. Questionable for western New York, and then it looks better for northern New York, the Adirondacks, and... Uh, northern portions of Maine. I think that's just about clear as mud, right? So let me do that again. We'll do it in a different color just to say that I did it. And cloud cover again along the path of totality. It's really all we're worried about. If you're out here in Arkansas, points to the south. This is no good. This is no good. Cloud cover all over the place. Unfortunately, Texas, I think, is going to miss out. Best chance of seeing fair weather goes from Indiana up into Ohio, right through here. I do see, at this range, pretty good bet for sunshine. You got some questions into western New York, and then better conditions further north into the Adirondacks and northern Maine. Uh, some questions as well out here in the uh, middle Mississippi River Valley. So the Ohio Valley looks good. We got question marks there in western New York. There's my forecast. I hope it's clear as mud. All right, you guys have a great night. We'll continue to monitor this and, of course, all the weather conditions as well in future updates. And uh, you guys have a great night. We'll talk to you soon.